Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I give you a lovely warm welcome this morning and thank you so much for joining us online. Yeah. It's just so good to have you with us. Well, can I say to you this morning, guys, you are in for a treat. Yep. Stephen's going to be speaking about identity. So just uh, what I would actually encourage you to do would be see once you've listened to the sermon, go back and listen to it again <coughs> and take time to listen to what God wants to speak to you about. You know, identity, us knowing who we are is so yeah. important. Yeah. We need to know it. And it's a journey. It's not going to happen just overnight. You know, I've been on this amazing journey of being a person that hated who I was, hated what I looked like, to somebody who now is comfortable in my own yeah. skin. And I'm able to say that I love who God has made me. Yeah. So take yeah. time after the, the sermon this morning and think yeah. about what God wants to speak to you about. Let him speak to you. Ask the Holy Spirit just to come and to just touch on your heart what yeah. needs to change in yeah. your life. Definitely. So let me read some scripture, which is really encouraging. And I love it because I'm going to be reading it from the message. The message. Yeah. So I'm reading from Romans. <clears throat> so here's what I want you to do. God helping you take your everyday ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work and walking around life and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing that you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside yeah. out. Readily recognise what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. That's what I was saying to you to do today. Respond to what God is saying. Yeah. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. Amen. 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 So, Just love those words. Yeah. God is changing us from the inside out. Wonderful. Uh, and I, th I think we spend time changing ourselves uh, from the outside in. That's right. Uh, if we change the outside, we'll maybe feel better <laughs> in the inside. But, you know, the truth is it's from the inside out. Absolutely. Uh, we have a fantastic God. Um, so, and, and we are blessed and glad that you received uh, your card and your chocolate uh, <laughs> this week. Um, I don't know what's happening with the post in no. Dundee. Um, uh, people in Glasgow got them before the people in Dundee. <laughs> um, so, but you know, we just wanted to remind you that you are loved by yeah. God. Uh, God cherishes you. He loves you. Um, and you are loved by us. Um, and so just a small thing, uh, just to let you know that we, uh, we are loved by God and we love you, Skies. Yeah. Uh, as we approach March uh, and approach Easter, um, we wanted to, and we are, <laughs> making March uh, a month of good news. Yeah. Uh, we want to share good news stories. Our city, our neighbours, our friends need uh, good news, some good news. Um, and we want to hear uh, some good news. We want to hear yeah. what God is doing uh, in you and through you and through your life mm -hmm. uh, today. Uh, so please, can you share your story uh, with us? It doesn't have to be uh, a big, long uh, message, just a, a short phrase or a sentence uh, of just what God has been doing in your life. Uh, and we want to just fill um, just March uh, with just good news yeah. stories um, because we have a good God That's right. uh, and he, ha he is so good to us. So come on, don't be shy, um, be bold, um, and write your message down and send it to us. Email us, uh, WhatsApp us, um, just what God is doing to you. As Sam says, That's let good. the redeemed of the Lord yeah. tell their story. That's come right. on, so tell your story. We That's have a right. couple uh, of uh, stories, uh, but we need more. Mm -hmm. We need more, so yeah. send them to us. Yeah, so before we enter into worship, let me yeah. just pray for us. Holy Spirit, you're so welcome. Yeah. Holy Spirit, I ask this morning for every person that is listening and everybody that comes around this word that you, Holy Spirit, would just start to open up their hearts, yeah. their ears and their eyes to what you want to say. 
Father, we pray this morning that people will get a hold of that revelation yeah. of their identity. It comes from you, Father. It's not about who we are. Yeah. It's not about what we yeah. do, Father. But it's about who you are in us and yeah. through us, Father. So, Lord, we give you permission this morning to come and have your way. Yeah. Dig deep in the garden of our hearts, Holy Spirit, and bring us revelation to the truth of your word and help us to stand on the truth of your word yeah. that we belong to you, Father, that we are your children and you take great delight in each one of us, Father. Yeah. And wherever we are, Father, whatever we're feeling, that you are with us yeah. right in the midst of whatever is going on. And Father, I want to thank you that you see each one of us. Yeah. You see us on the inside, Father. Yeah. And I thank you that you are with us. So this morning, just open our ears to the truth of your word, yeah. Father. We ask in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So let's
Uh, well, today we are going to conclude uh, with uh, our series on the promises of God. Uh, and I want to say uh, what a journey it has been. Uh, I hope uh, and pray that you have been uh, as blessed uh, as I have uh, in hearing and speaking on these messages. I hope uh, that you have been challenged. I hope that you have been encouraged. Uh, and I do uh, pray that you uh, have discovered uh, why we can have hope in the promises of God. Uh, in this journey that we have uh, taken over these past few weeks on the promises of God, uh, we have uh, saw how God uh, promised the people of Israel as they were slaves in Egypt, as they were in bondage, and God spoke through Moses uh, and says, tell my people that I will bring them out, that I will free them, that I will redeem them. Um, and these were uh, the promises of God. Uh, today, uh, we're going to be looking at uh, God's promise uh, to claim uh, the people as his own people, uh, the promise of identity. It says, I will claim you as my own people and I will be your God. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. Uh, today, uh, I want to speak about the promise of a new identity. Uh, God was going to give the people of Israel a new identity. He was choosing them as his very own uh, possession, his people. Uh, they would be God's uh, special possession. Uh, God wants to give us uh, and has given us, if you know Jesus today, a new identity. Uh, and God wants you to live out your life in the security of that new identity. Um, so before I continue uh, with this message, why don't you take a look at this short video? Let me introduce you to yourself. You are alone, a solitary figure connected joint and bone to no one but yourself. And this is the life you chose. Let me introduce you to yourself. You are cut off, separated. You ran into your isolation, and now there is no way back into the family from which you came. Let me introduce you to yourself. You are stained. You have sealed your isolated separation with guilt. Let me introduce you to yourself. You are under the shroud of slavery. In trying to own yourself, you became owned. Your master is your sin. You serve nothing but your own isolation and separation. This is your identity. This is who you are. But let me introduce you to who he is. He is God's special possession. There is no shroud of darkness on him. Yet he fell under the dark veil of death so that God might specially possess us. Let me introduce you to who he is. He is the holy nation. He is perfect and the fullness of God's kingdom. Yet he left his kingdom of purity to take on our impurity. He tarnished his holiness by becoming sin for us. Let me introduce you to who he is. He is the royal priesthood. There was no distance between himself and God, yet the royal one was struck for our separation. He took the blow 
for our absence. Let me introduce you to who he is. He is the chosen one. Before the foundations of the earth, he chose to stand alone to bring us to God. That is who he is. That is the identity of Jesus. But there is even more. So let me introduce you to who you are now. You are now the chosen people. No longer alone, you have been brought into a full and eternal family with God himself as your father and the Prince of Peace as your brother. Let me introduce you to who you are now. You are now the royal priesthood. You are the sons and daughters of the king who stand as a beacon of light to a separated world that there is hope and there is access to the Father. Let me introduce you to who you are now. You are now the holy nation. You have been sprinkled with the blood of God's perfect son so that now all his goodness, all his righteousness, all his perfection is credited to you. Let me introduce you to who you are now. You are now God's special possession. You have been sealed for salvation. You have been protected with perseverance. He who bought you with his blood will never let you fall away, for he loves you and he owns you. This is who you were. This is who he is. This is who you are now. This is your identity. Uh, do you know the truth is that knowing who you really are in God does bring freedom uh, to our lives? Uh, knowing who we really are in God brings freedom to our life. Uh, and I want to say today uh, that you are not what you do. Uh, you are not who people say you are. Uh, you are not uh, the, the, the lies that you uh, believe about yourself. You are not um, who you think you are. Um, you are who God says you are. Uh, come on, why don't you uh, tell yourself, I am who God says I am. I am who God says I am. The real you, uh, who God says you are, can be found in God's words, uh, can be uh, just reinforced uh, by the help of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so today, today uh, I want to read uh, from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 to 10. So if you have a Bible, uh, why don't you turn to it? Uh, and let's read uh, 1 Peter together. It says, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's very own possession, and as a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of darkness into his wonderful light, once you had no identity as a people, now you are God's people. Once you received no mercy, now you have received God's mercy. Amen. Uh, my desire today, my prayer for you today, is that you will grasp hold of that truth that you are a new creation that you have a new identity. The old has gone, the new has come. The old you has gone, and the new life in Christ has come. You have a new identity today. You are made in the image of God. Believe that today. Know that today. Uh, do you know, today people are... Uh, concerned uh, with self-image. Yeah, many, many people are concerned uh, with self-image. Books, uh, millions of books have been written 
just on developing uh, your self-image. And I've read uh, a few of them. Millions of pounds uh, have been made in, in these books uh, of people wanting to develop their self-image. Uh, do you know, your self-image has a very strong impact on the way that you live your life. Uh, it has an impact on the way or you, your outlook on life. Uh, Proverbs, isn't it? It says, as a man thinks, uh, so is he. So how you see yourself how you see yourself will have an effect on the way that you live your lives. And you've heard that message over the past uh, few weeks. The enemy of our life, Satan, uh, wants you to see a warped image of you, of who you are. Uh, how many of us uh, remember the circus uh, and as we went to the circus, I loved going to the fun house and standing in front of uh, the mirrors uh, and how it would just warp and distort uh, just the shape uh, as you stood before those mirrors. Uh, and you know, many people uh, today uh, have a, a warped image uh, of who they are because they are looking in the wrong mirror. They are looking in the wrong mirror. Do you know, these warped images of who we are, uh, of how we see ourselves, uh, comes from many, many areas, many things. Uh, do you know, we can be defined by events uh, and traumas that have happened in our life, uh, even from childhood, uh, do you know, being bullied, um, just being rejected, uh, that sticks with us, uh, and we carry that into adulthood, and that becomes, at times, our identity. Uh, doing well or not doing well in school, work, uh, in our performance, you know, our identity um, could be just summed up in that. Uh, when we fail, we just class ourselves as failures. Uh, but that is not who you are. Uh, you know, words that have been spoken over us, uh, you will not amount to anything. You will never be able to do that. You are always going to be. Um, and, you know, words that have been spoken over us, words are powerful. Um, and, you know, the, the word of God tells us that there is life and death in the power of the tongue. Uh, my encouragement is that we learn uh, to speak words of life over our own lives, and over the lives of others. Do you know, lies of the enemy. Do you know, he will tell you and he will accuse you and he will try and condemn you and to walk in that unworthiness. Um, and so we have to reject the lies of the enemy. The only way that we are going to come against the lies is becoming with the truth. The truth of what God says about you. And that is found in his word. Uh, illnesses, addictions, abuse, the shame that we carry, all can become uh, just our identity uh, if we don't deal with them. Uh, do you know, we have, and people have an unhealthy uh, self-image we wonder what other people think about us. Uh, we, we wonder, uh, we think what people are thinking about us. And you know, it just gets us into bondage. Uh, and God wants us to walk in the freedom of who we are. Uh, as I served uh, in Glasgow Elam Church, there was a phrase that we would use, and Pastor Kevin Pete um, would always use that, him and Margaret, your past is not your future. Your past is not your future. Your future is in God's hands. And you know, you may have failed, you may have messed up in the past, but that is not who you are and that is not your future. We have a God, uh, we heard it last week, who can redeem our past. Uh, and God wants to give you just a glorious uh, and just such a, a, a future known freedom in your life. 
Uh, so my question again is, what distorted mirrors are you looking into? Is the mirror that you are looking into making you feel less worthy, making you feel less valuable than what God says about you? And if it is, you're looking in the wrong mirror. And it's time to change that mirror. Do you know, even in the natural, there is many people who won't even look in the mirror. Um, they have this image uh, of what they look like and they will not look in a mirror. Uh, when they do, they just look and think, oh, um, they, they just see a warped image uh, of themselves. And, and it's got to take a change in our mindset. Uh, we all remember, don't we, uh, the, the Walt Disney movie, uh, Snow White, uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, and the, the queen uh, who had a, a mirror, uh, and she would come daily uh, before this mirror, and she would say, mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest one of all? Uh, and most times, uh, the mirror would always say, you are the fairest, O queen of all. But there was a day when the queen asked that same question uh, and the mirror responded uh, and she was told that it's not you, that it's not you, it's someone else. And even the rags that this young girl wore would not hide her beauty. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? When you look in the mirror, what do you see? Who do you see? Who do you see? Uh, don't let the enemy uh, just give you a warped picture of who you are. That is why, again, I'm saying we need to get into God's word and discover who we really are. Uh, and with the help of the Holy Spirit, who reveals the truth in God's word, uh, Chip Ingram, uh, a Bible teacher, uh, he has um, or says that there's three mirrors um, that we would tend to, to look into. Uh, that He says that we would, we'd have the, the appearance mirror. The appearance mirror uh, where we look at my value uh, is depend, depended on how I look. As we gaze into that, that appearance mirror, uh, that our value is based on how we look. Uh, the second mirror uh, is a performance mirror. Uh, and as we look at that mirror uh, and look into that mirror, we see our value uh, based upon what we do. Uh, and the third mirror is the status mirror, uh, where my value depends on what others think of me. What others think of me. Do you know, even the performance mirror uh, and social media, uh, and we put something on, do you know, our mood fluctuates depending on how many likes we get or how many likes we don't get. Um, and, and for my life, uh, I was looking into the performance mirror. My value uh, was, was based on what I did. And I had to discover that my value was in who I was, that I was a child of God. And that was my revelation. Uh, so don't let your value come from any other source other than what God says about you. What mirror are you looking into today? Just ponder that for a second. What mirror are you looking into today. My prayer is that you will move from that place of having a work image of you to that place of having a healthy self-image, knowing who you are in Christ. Uh, if we are going to live our calling uh, and our purposes of Jesus in our life successfully, I believe that we have to have an accurate view of who we are. We have to know our identity. And let me say, this is a journey. This is a journey. 
Again, I said it last week and I'm saying it this week. This is a journey and it's a journey of revelation as the Holy Spirit reveals more and more truth to our lives that we will walk in more and more freedom. So what mirror are you looking into? Do you know, and that goes for the identity of the church. Do you know, the church, uh, as a church, I, my prayer is that we would be a healthy church, that we would walk uh, in the purposes uh, and the promises of God, that we as a church would know our identity. Jesus loves the church. Jesus died for the church. Uh, and a healthy church is made up of healthy people. Yes, we're not perfect. But we are growing in our knowledge of him. We are growing in our identity and discovering more and more our identity in him. So in the book that we read, 1 Peter uh, chapter 1, uh, sorry, chapter 2, uh, Peter uh, here in his letter is writing to uh, Jewish Christians scattered uh, all over the Roman Empire. Uh, Nero was the emperor uh, and he was torturing uh, Christians. He was killing Christians. Uh, and he was, <laughs> he was coming up with creative ways of killing Christians. And so Nero uh, was not uh, a good man. Um, and, and so Christians were suffering um, such abuse. And Peter wants and wanted to bring uh, a message of encouragement uh, to the people there. Uh, in these verses uh, that we have read this morning, Peter wants to bring uh, and remind the believers, uh, and, he, and this is a reminder for us, uh, of the identity that we have in God. And he gives uh, four characteristics of that identity. Uh, number one, he says, you are a chosen people. You are a chosen people. You are chosen by God, uh, not based on your ability, not based on your looks, not based on your Bible knowledge. It was based on God's love and grace towards you. Uh, 1 Peter, uh, there right at the very beginning, chapter 1, says, God the Father knew you and chose you long ago, and his Spirit has made you holy. As a result, you have obeyed him and have been cleansed by the blood of Christ. Whether you're having a brilliant day, whether you are having a mundane day, whether you are having a terrible day, whether you feel close to God, whether you don't feel to God, feel close to God, know today, that you were chosen by God. He chose you. He knew you and he chose you. One thing that never changes is that we are loved by God, that we are chosen by God. And God has extended the promises that he made to Abraham and to Moses and these promises are ours through Christ Jesus. This is part of the new covenant that through Christ Jesus, uh, his love endures forever. Do you know Hosea? Uh, I encourage you, read that book, Hosea. And you know, whenever I read that, I just think, oh, that poor man, Hosea. <laughs> uh, that poor man, um, Hosea married a woman uh, who would be unfaithful to him, who would betray his trust. God told him uh, to marry a woman who would be unfaithful to him. Uh, the Bible says, uh, marry a promiscuous woman. Uh, the NLT says, marry a prostitute. Uh, the New King James says, marry a harlot. Uh, and so God told Hosea uh, to marry uh, this, marry a woman who would be unfaithful. Uh, and this was to represent uh, just the, the relationship between God and the people of Israel, how the people of Israel were unfaithful to God uh, and they were going after 
uh, other things that they were just chasing after uh, other things that their uh, love was to be towards God. Uh, and the constant factor was God's faithful love. Even though the people of Israel were unfaithful, God was always faithful. Do you know, for our lives, do you know, we had turned our backs on God. Uh, we were unfaithful. We were chasing after uh, other loves. Um, and God, in his grace and his mercy, loved us. He does love us. And he has chosen us. He has redeemed us. He has freed us. He has saved us. Uh, that is good news today. Do I hear an amen? Uh, Paul, uh, in Romans chapter 9, uh, quotes Hosea. Uh, it says there in Romans nine twenty-five to 26, Concerning the Gentiles, God says in the prophecy of Hosea, Those who are not my people... I will now call my people and I will love those whom I do not love before. And then at the place where they were told, you are not my people, there they will be called children of the living God. Children of the living God. Today, if you know Jesus Christ today, you are a child of the living God. Uh, if you don't know Jesus today, uh, you can become a child of God, by just surrendering your life to him. Uh, the second thing is that Peter tells us that, that the people were a royal priesthood, a royal peace, priesthood. Uh, Peter, probably thinking about Exodus chapter 19, uh, where it says that you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. In the old covenant, uh, we had uh, the old priesthood, uh, Aaron and his sons and the, the Levites, uh, the, the priesthood uh, in the new covenant. Uh, God's people are the priesthood. Uh, do you know, all of us, you today are in ministry. Uh, you are in ministry. You're in the ministry. Uh, know that today. Know that today. Uh, access to God through Jesus Christ. We have direct access. We can come right into the presence of God. Uh, and we do bring a sacrifice, not of animals, uh, not with blood. Uh, that has already been paid. But Hebrews chapter 13 tells us, therefore let us offer through Jesus a continual sacrifice of praise to God, proclaiming our allegiance to him. And don't forget to do good and to share with those in need. These are the sacrifices that please God. Uh, Romans chapter 12, I love what it says in the message. It says, so here's what I want you to do. God helping you take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, your eating, your going to work, your walking around life and place it before God as an offering, embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. We are chosen by God. We are a royal priesthood. Uh, and again, if you look at the means and the way that a priest was chosen, uh, they were chosen by God. They were washed. Uh, they were clothed with a special robe and they were anointed with oil. Uh, chosen by God to live holy lives. They were washed clean uh, for the, the care of that place of worship. Uh, they were clothed with uh, a robe uh, and their duty was to keep the fires burning. And they were anointed with oil. Uh, do you know, as we look at what Jesus has done for us, do you know, as we look at our lives, that we have been chosen by God, that we have been washed clean, by Jesus. Our sins have been washed away. We have been clothed with a robe of righteousness and we have been anointed by the Holy Spirit to continue the ministry and the work of God uh, today in our world. Uh, keeping 
the fires of passion burning in our hearts. Uh, we do that through worship uh, and through prayer uh, and through his word and through fellowship with one another, living holy lives. Um, and the third thing uh, Peter tells is a holy nation. A holy nation, Peter is saying to the people that although they are dispersed uh, across the whole Roman Empire, in Christ they are still a holy nation. We are still together. We are still one in Christ Jesus. We belong to the kingdom of God, not the kingdom of this world. We are all in the kingdom together. Together. Yes, uh, in this time of lockdown restrictions, uh, when the church can't meet together, we are dispersed all across uh, Dundee uh, for those in Dundee Elam Church. But we are still a holy nation. We are still the people of God. Uh, we are still one in Christ Jesus. Our identity is children of God. Uh, and that comes not just, not by meeting together. Do you know, that is who we are. That is who we are. We are children of the living God. And number four, we are God's special possession. Uh, we were nobodies and God made us somebodies. Uh, not somebodies in a, an arrogant, proud way, but God made us somebodies. You today, if you are watching and you just see your life as a nobody, let me tell you, you are a somebody. <laughs> you are loved by God. You are cherished by God. Romans uh, chapter 8 verses 14 to 17 says, So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you have received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba Father. Abba Father. For his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. And since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we are to share his glory, we must also share his suffering. Do you know, we are God's children. We have an identity. We are God's special possession. Our true identity today Know that is that we are chosen by God, that we are holy and called and special. Uh, in this week or last week, I just had a revelation. Um, uh, it just struck me. I don't know why I haven't noticed it before. Uh, the book of John. Uh, John would always describe himself as a disciple that Jesus loved. The disciple that Jesus loved. I always thought uh, that he was arrogant, <laughs> uh, that he was just, uh, he thought he was a somebody. Um, and so he would go about uh, and even say to the other uh, disciples, I'm the, the one that Jesus loves. Um, but the revelation uh, for me was that John wasn't thinking that he was better than uh, the, other, the other disciples. Uh, John had a revelation I believe that he was loved by God. And so he could live in that. He could voice that. The disciple that Jesus loved, he was assured that Jesus loved him. And I believe that was his revelation, that he was loved by God. And so don't be shy in declaring, I am loved by God. I am God's child. I am chosen, I am blessed, I am holy because Jesus has made me. And it's a revelation. It's a revelation. Uh, John, the disciple whom Jesus loved. Stephen, the disciple whom Jesus loved. Karen, Andrew, Pauline or whoever. You put your name there. The disciple that Jesus loved. You are loved today. We do have a need for followers of Christ to walk 
in their true identity, confident in the knowledge of Christ and the identity that we have in Christ, assured of his love, assured of his calling, assured of his purposes, assured of our identity as children of the living God. This is a journey. This is a transformation of faith. Mirror, mirror on the wall. What mirror are you looking into today? Let us pray. Father, I thank you for your word to us today. I thank you for your love. I thank you that you have given us a new identity, that we are chosen by you, that we are your special possession, that we are children of the living God, that we are called to be holy, that we are a royal priesthood, that we have uh, been called uh, to, to minister unto you, that we have been called to, to intercede uh, for those Lord, in our world who don't know you, Lord, my prayer is for a revelation. Lord, for everyone who is watching today, that they would know that identity that they have in Christ Jesus. Father, I come against the lies of the enemy. Lord, the purposes of the enemy to keep us walking in that warped image of who we are. Father, today, let us make that choice that we will walk in who we are created to be. We will walk in that true identity. Father, I ask that as we, Lord, meditate on your words, that you, Holy Spirit, will reveal the truth, will reveal truth as to who we really are. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, well, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, my prayer is uh, this message, I feel this this was an important message uh, and we need to uh, so grasp it. Uh, this world needs men and women who know their true identity in Christ, not better than anybody else, but just knowing who they are in Jesus, loved by him, chosen by him, cared for by him and that we can share with others the goodness of God that he has shown to us. Remember that uh, you are blessed uh, and know today that you are blessed to be a blessing.